Hi, now that I've made the video on how to become a mystery shopper, I wanted to add a second video on how you can be a successful mystery shopper. Once you receive an email and you've applied for the shop and you've accepted the shop and this shop has been scheduled to you, you will find instructions in your email or the website on how to download instructions for the shop. You want to do this right away so you know exactly what's expected of you when you go on the shop. You don't want to wait till the last minute and then realize that uh, the shop is something you can't do because you forgot your camera or there's special instructions, whatever the reason may be. So you want to go ahead, you want to read through the instructions and take notes. Um, to remind yourself, maybe put the date on the calendar of when you agreed to do the shop. Maybe set up a reminder on your on your computer calendar to pop up to remind you to do the shop. Um, you want to know exactly what it is you need to be doing when you go in there. You don't want to take notes while you're at the shop, but most likely during the shop you might have to check the bathroom. That's a good time to take notes. You can go into the bathroom and verify everything you need to do for the bathroom and you can uh, take notes while you're in there and that will help you remember the color of the person's eyes or their name um, very often people will be required to wear a name tag and so it's important that you get their name and it's also important that you get their description um, you'll most likely be asked the length of the hair how tall the person was the age range the color of the person's eyes etc and then once you're done with the shop you want to fill out the shop report as soon as possible if your shop is late um, being submitted your shop report you might not get paid for that shop so you want to plan ahead and you want to make sure you have time left in your day to get home and send in the report you'll also most likely need a copy of a receipt if you had to make a purchase for reimbursement so you want to have that and you want to make sure that your fax is up and running so you can fax everything and right away or sometimes you can just scan in a copy of the receipt and upload it to your report sometimes when you make a report online you're only given it you're only given about thirty minutes to complete the report so you want to make sure that your report is completed in that time period or else the shop page will disappear and you'll have to start all over again sometimes you can Sometimes you have the option to save the report and continue it later. So you want to go ahead and save it, even though you're going to continue it immediately right after you save it. You just want to give yourself more time to add the details. You want to be very, very detailed in your report. That's what the mystery shoppers are looking for. The mystery shopping companies are looking for. If you are too vague, the company may reject your shop, and they may reject your shop because you didn't do everything that the company that has hired the mystery shopping company to do. So if they are going to reject the shop, the mystery shopping company you work for is going to reject your report and you're not going to get paid. Normally it takes about six to eight weeks to get paid for a shop and that's only because you have to turn in your report, the mystery shopping company has to turn in their report and the company that hired the shopping mystery shopping company has to do their legwork and then they pay the mystery shopping company which in turn uh, pays you so again you just want to be prepared you want to have detailed notes you don't want to take notes while you're in the shop you want to be extremely observant like for example they might ask you what the parking lot looked like. So you need to look for, check the parking lot. You need to check for signs in the windows. You need to check for certain things within the store. You need to know when you were greeted and how many customers were in the store and how many associates were in the store. What were the associates doing while you were waiting to be greeted? How long did it take you before you were greeted? You have to remember all these times. Um, sometimes you can pretend to be checking your cell phone when you're really looking at the time. You can. Um, it's important to have a watch so you know exactly what these times were. Now you don't want to be not. You don't want to mess up your report because a lot of times these stores have security cameras, and they can and will go back and check the security cameras to make sure that you were not making things up, making sure that you were in the store when you said you were. 
um, things like that, especially if you give a bad report or if you um, make up a name for somebody that doesn't even work there or if you forgot the name and just gave a description. There's many reasons why a company might do that. So being on time, doing the shop when you said you were going to do it, and turning in the report on time will help you become a successful mystery shopper and companies will most likely use you again. A lot of times mystery shopping companies say you can only shop a store once every 90 days. That's because they don't want the employees there to recognize you. Sometimes, uh, most times companies know they're going to be mystery shopped. So sometimes employees recognize a mystery shopper. For example, um, if you act differently than you would if you were ordinarily shopping the store, that's a signal. If you're taking notes, that's a signal. If you ask them their name, you know, sometimes you can say at the end of the sale, if they don't have the name tag on, oh, thank you so much. I've never shopped here before. This was such a great experience. What's your name? Um, you can say something like that. If you just ask their name just in the middle of a conversation, that's out of the ordinary and people might peg you as a mystery shopper. You want to be discreet. You want to dress the part. You don't want to underdress. You don't want to overdress. If you're going to shop a discount chain, you want to dress, you know, jeans and a t-shirt. If you're going to dress an upscale jewelry store, you want to dress the part. You don't want to go to an upscale jewelry store in jeans and a t-shirt. Uh, the restaurant you're going to, you want to be sure to dress um, casually or depending if it's an upscale restaurant, you definitely want to get dressed to the nines before you go. You don't want to bring your children. You don't want to bring your friends. You don't want to bring a video camera. Sometimes you can bring a recorder. That helps take notes if you have a personal recorder. But remember, some states you cannot legally use a personal recorder and record one part of a conversation with the other person not knowing about it. But if you just use it for the shop and just delete it right away, that will be helpful to you, especially if you have to um, remember a specific, the specific answer to a question. Like you might be given a question, um, did the employee point out a specific item that was on sale? And you may not have asked about that item and they may have mentioned it and you just didn't remember, it helps to go back and listen to that recording. I hope that I've given you some helpful information. I hope that I have not repeated myself too much and I hope that you are successful in becoming a mystery shopper. Thanks so much and have a great day.